Uh, it is 6.30 and I will call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, first order of business will be to approve the minutes of August 7th, 2023. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 First order, All right, three nothing. Thank you very much. All right, uh, new business. First order of business is recreation department discussion with recreation coordinator Jim. Welcome, Jim. Thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Well, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mess around. So, uh, Jeff and I have had some conversations about uh, well, a number of things, and we thought it would be good to uh, come and um, meet with you briefly and kind of go over some of the history of the rec department and um, kind of where we're at right now, um, and some of the some of the issues, um, I guess I would call them, um, that we have um, that uh, would probably be good to. Um, Put up for some discussion and consideration as we move forward into this year and into the next year or two. Um, so first of all, I, I'm not exactly sure when the rec coordinator's position came about. Uh, it was in the mid-90s, somewhere 95, 96, I believe. Um, I've been in the position since 2001. And, um, The position was an 18-hour position, and then with the downturn in the economy in 2008, and again in, in fiscal year, actually fiscal year 09 and fiscal year 10, um, departments all took a 10% hit. So the coordinator's position went down to 15 hours in 2009, and then down to 12 hours, which is where it's been up until um, six weeks ago, when uh, fortunately the town has restored those those hours. Um, during that time, um, I continued to probably work all of those hours and many more um, doing uh, the, the rec job here. Um, we um, had uh, not a lot going on during the two, two, two and a half years of COVID. Um, we're kind of, I think, at this point, hopefully. Um, any of our COVID kind of restrictions are kind of off, unless the state and or the federal government uh, imposes them again at some point. There's talk of a new variant that might be coming this uh, this fall and winter, but uh, at this point, I think we're kind of back to, to normal. So we're hoping to get back to having our full, um, full array of, of activities. We were pretty close to that um, this past year, um, but we're hoping to get back to uh, yoga classes again at the library and uh, we're hoping to add uh, I'm hoping to add some kind of a walking club now that we have the um, Riverside Park with the walking uh, loop uh, as well as the uh, I think it's close to a quarter mile loop around the soccer field out in the back here so I'm hoping to, to do something with that uh, at this point um, the other piece of this that people should be aware of is the fact that the rec department has uh, nothing really to do with the baseball program in town. Uh, we do run a t-ball program for kindergarten uh, and first graders, but the baseball, Sunderland Youth Baseball League, operates the baseball program for second grade through sixth grade. Um, and they take care of the baseball field and its facilities. Um, what you have out back here, other than the soccer goals and the two soccer benches uh, on the far side of the field, uh, toward that farm field, um, and um, the uh, kayak shed at this point, which also now has uh, uh, on the back of it or back part of it uh, a shed for baseball. Mm -hmm. So the baseball shed needed to be either renovated, fixed, re-roofed, uh, but when the kayak kiosk came into uh, people's thinking, 
they thought it was a better place for it, where the old baseball shed was, and so in combination with that, the uh, baseball got a new shed. Um, and, uh, but basically, uh, everything else, including my shed, which I've been waiting a long time to get replaced, and hopefully there'll be enough money left in the park grant once we figure that out with the accountants um, to take place. But everything out here, other than the soccer goals and the um, two players' benches and the new kayak kiosk and baseball shed, has been bought and paid for by the baseball league. All the fencing, all the dugouts, the, the old bathrooms, uh, my rec shed, which was the baseball shed before they built a new one, um, the batting cages, the irrigation system on field one, um, the backstop and, and fencing on field two. Uh, everything out there has been bought and paid for by the baseball league. Um, the baseball league probably At some point in the very near future, I would say two or three years, is probably going to be asking for the town to take over the baseball program. Mm. Um, they're down to two or three people essentially um, doing the program, and their kids are aging out. And at this point, uh, they don't see who might be coming up to take it over. So that's just a heads up mm -hmm. uh, that that could be happening. Uh, baseball's is one of the more labor intensive um, of our youth sports. Um, and if that were to fall to the rec coordinator, we'd have to have some conversations about, about that in the future. So I think you should be aware of that. Um, the other challenges that we sort of have at this point <coughs> are in terms of field maintenance and maintenance of um, the um, the dugouts and the fences and the backstops and the sheds. Uh, there, there has not been up until uh, I'd say about six years ago now, maybe no money for any maintenance at all. We now do have a field maintenance line item in the annual town budget. It was five thousand dollars. I believe it's now six thousand uh, dollars. Um, but that money goes very quickly, and so I wanted, one of the things I wanted to share with you are um, the annual costs, uh, what it would really take to maintain the fields. The soccer field out here right now is basically weeds. Nothing's been done to it in years and years and years and years. And we do have uh, money, there was capital money uh, appropriated before we started doing Riverside Park, and for some reason during Riverside Park, um, I think that money was actually being sort of used as leverage for some of the grants. We weren't able to receive the soccer field, which also included redoing field two with the baseball. Um, so that's something we're hoping to do in the next two years, um, but I will give you this. Uh, Thank you. This is an updated version of what you already have, Jeff. Yeah. And so the, um, the work on the field two and the uh, soccer field um, will be somewhere in the range of eight to 9,000. There is 12,000 set aside for that um, at this point. Um, it's also possible by the time we get to do that that it might get drawn up. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that, that's uh, a project in the works. The best time for us to do that is in the fall, according to the people that um, we've talked to about uh, possibly bidding on it um, and, and, and doing the work. Um, they would prefer not to do the spring, uh, especially if you get a hot, humid summer. Um, and, and where this summer, maybe the, the new grass would have gotten drowned out more than heated out. Uh, but at any rate, it seems like it's a fall project. Um, and the soccer field is used by Frontier um, five days a week. They have at least one team that practice here every day. And then middle school and JV home games are on this field. Um, they also use the bathrooms. Um, they do provide us at the present time with paint to paint both their big soccer field, our big soccer field, 
and the smaller field that goes crosswise with orange paint. Mm -hmm. uh, every couple of years, they give us two new sets of nets and another new set of corner flags. Um, but that does not uh, really come close to meeting the uh, cost of their usage of the field. They also use the elementary school soccer field for at least one team to practice. And they have in the past used merit field, the softball field. Um, they have not for the last several years, partly because of COVID and partly um, they, they haven't needed to because there's a new softball field, the Hurley field in Wakeley, which is now the JV field um, for Frontier. Um, they have uh, paid, uh, they have paid us for uh, at least one month of the cost of the porta potty at Merritt Field, uh, which we need in the spring for softball. Um, but the Frontier Soccer Club that utilizes that field um, uses it in the spring and in the fall. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. So anyway, these are the annual projected costs. Um, the mulling is done by the town contractor, presently Bobby Ahern, but depending on the weather, we may need extra mowings for both soccer in the fall and softball and baseball in the spring, and those uh, come out at the present time to be $75 each. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I believe, he only did two or three. Um, so this cost varies. Last year, he did four for baseball and softball, and he did two for soccer, uh, I believe. Uh, but that varies from year to year. So that 300 bucks that you'll see on a couple of different places. Um, the biggest expense really is um, resetting the infields for baseball and for softball. Softball needs to be done almost every year because it's totally a skin infield. And um, it, well, they get overgrown as soon as we're not using those fields and dragging them uh, for two, three, four weeks, they are overgrown with weeds. Um, but the softball field needs to be done every year, baseball probably every other year. Um, and then the next biggest expense is um, the uh, treatments to the fields. Baseball has been, been doing treatments for the baseball outfield and the surrounding grassy areas. Here, yeah. Here they have stopped doing them because they don't have enough money. Um, we have instituted uh, treatments at the elementary school for both Merritt Field outfield and the surrounding grass as well as the soccer field. Um, there was some fear that we might need to receive that field. Um, but I think maybe the treatments are taking hold. Um, the field looks wonderful right now, um, but the fall soccer season is just getting started. But it, it looks like the treatments are working there. Mm -hmm. um, we would need to do those treatments also here once we receive this field. Mm. So these costs reflect those kinds of um, things. And, and basically, we would be coming out somewhere in the 10 to 11 to Thirteen or fourteen thousand dollar range. If in fact we had to do all of those every year, but that does not include um, labor for dragging the fields. The fields really should be dragged um, at least five or six times a week, probably an hour and a half each of labor. Um, presently, baseball does it on a volunteer basis, maybe twice a week, and I do two or three times at Merrifield. Most of that's been on my own time. Um, over the years that we've had that field, um, just to try to keep it in really nice shape for the for the girls um, using the field. So uh, again, there's nothing here that reflects any costs for maintaining dugouts or sheds or the bathrooms. Now they've been renovated, but mm -hmm. there's still going to be some maintenance costs at some point in time. Um, so there, there's no nothing reflected in these, in these numbers costs uh, for any of that type of expense. Um, so this is just a, you know, once we receive that field, we're going to have to treat it, or we're going to lose it just like we've lost it over all of these years. So that just becomes a reality. So this is just something for us to begin to think about um, the expense for the. Uh, Baseball and the soccer field would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,500 a year. Um, 
which is what we're paying over at Merritt Field and the soccer field at the elementary school right now for four treatments plus a, a line treatment. Um, so this just gives you an idea of you know what we're really talking about if we, if we want to maintain the, the fields um, and if we want to maintain the facilities. Um, there is a cost to that. Um, and it becomes a bigger cost if we don't maintain it, obviously. So um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I know it's a lot of <laughs> to digest, but. And if, if we were to move forward with um, the, the project with the capital money that's already set aside, is that something you want to do this fall or are we looking at next fall? No, we have to do it. We have to do it next fall okay, at so this point yes, because uh, I would have to tell Frontier that they can't have their practices or any games on the field that they've already got them scheduled for. This so, week. how long is it out? Then it'll be out of commission for the fall and the spring. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. and then it, so it, it take it a year. Basically, be out of commission for three, twelve months. Three year. Okay. To uh, ensure that you know it comes in and um, that it's in good shape. And you said the money's already set aside for that. Is that so? The that was a capital. Uh, fund uh, vote uh, from well, five or six years ago now okay. um, by the town that money is set aside so yeah. that money's there um, it's a question of when do we do it and it is also a bit of a question as to how much we really do with the baseball field back there it's really not used okay. yeah I've only seen the one in back the one in back, the one back. Yeah, back we call field two with yeah. the backstop in the back yeah um, but it potentially could be used um, so we've talked about cutting the infield out again, um, keeping the baselines grassed, um, not doing dirt, makes it a little easier to maintain, it just needs to be mowed. Yeah. Um, and it also it overlaps on the soccer field mm -hmm. uh, as well. So the less that we have unevenness and dirt, the better. Uh, so that's one of the things we've talked about um, with the baseball league uh, in terms of you know, doing that. And and the other issue really is, um, well, two, two other issues, I guess. I'll try to be quick. Uh, we, we don't really have a field use policy. Um, we have developed one, the REC committee has developed one, and, and I have been using it with some organizations. Um, but we, we haven't been really good as a town in terms of looking out for the town's interests. We don't charge Frontier. Waitley does. What's, um, what's Waitley charging for early? I, no, I, don't, I don't really know, but yeah. they, they have the softball field, they have the baseball field, yeah. their middle school and JV uses the 90-foot diamond, and then they have that soccer field as their varsity soccer field. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they maintain it, Frontier maintains it, they also pay and lines it, um, lines the fields before games and everything, and um, I don't know what they get. From, from Frontier. Um, but I think at some point, you know, we do need to, to do the user fee. Um, it's complicated a little bit because at the elementary school, the principal is the one who um, oversees the use of the fields and the facility and gives the approval. Um, and uh, here, it kind of falls on, on me. Um, but we have groups that use it that aren't really rec kind of things. Um, and so there's some people using the fields and, and we haven't been real good about um, getting in, uh, getting insurance certificates, making sure they have insurance coverage. Um, I'm doing that now. Any group that comes and wants to use it. We had a, a middle school baseball team this year. Um, kids that got cut from the middle school team um, were able to form a team. Um, and they wanted to use field two for practices, um, which was not very good for them, but um, it was the only field they could get for practices. And so they provided us with a certificate of insurance. And uh, as per this policy, we, we waived the fee uh, for using it because uh, of the nature of the activity. These were kids that were cut, they really wanted to play, and we felt that that was uh, worth waiving. So I also have that. I don't know if you want to, to see it. It's a, at this point a draft 
I would say policy. Now, would that be something that um, you'd like us, <clears throat> excuse me, as a board and as a town to make official on a town level so that you can enforce that more, or do you feel comfortable enforcing it as it is? My, my, my uncomfort is that there, there can be groups using the fields that aren't being asked, do you have insurance, are we even thinking about the liability for the town? Sure. And if it's a wreck type of a thing, We've had, we've had outdoor yoga during COVID. She provided us with a certificate of insurance and she paid a fee. Um, we've had uh, a field hockey group that wants to practice in the spring, mm -hmm. um, continue field hockey and get ready for the fall. Fifth and sixth graders, a couple years ago, they provided us with an insurance certificate. They paid a small fee to use the field uh, one day a week for seven weeks. Um, the Franklin, Soccer club now um, unofficially is providing us with the, they're paying for one month of the porta potty and um, one of the treatments at the field in the spring and in the fall. Um, at the school, oh, over the, at the school? At the elementary school. But that's been sort of, an, that's sort of an unofficial kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but we weren't getting any money, and they're the major users of that field and beating it up. And they understood that they that needs to be you know, kept up, kept up and maintained as well. The original agreement with them goes back quite a few years, um, and they paid for the lot, uh, the paint to line the field, and they per, they put new nets up when they were needed on the big goals. The front tier group now does not use the big field, does not use the big goals, and so you know I said to them, it doesn't make sense for you to give us nets that you don't use, uh, but it would be good if you did these other things. So for now, we have a verbal agreement that that's kind of what's happening. So do you, would it be fair to say that what you want to do is identify which users haven't provided us with insurance information and make sure we get that from them, otherwise, sorry, you can't use it? Well, that that would be my feeling. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I agree. I, I would not want anyone using the field that isn't covered by insurance for liability reasons. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a it's a bit of a tricky thing. If a group of people wants to come down and use rec fields in a, in a town, they can do that. But if it's an organized group, right. then you know they're coming and using our facilities and. Um, we're incurring a certain amount of liability because of their use of it and their coaches, their people overseeing that program, um, you know, all that kind of liability. Um, the town is sort of taking on, <laughs> if you will. Um, so uh, to me, it makes some sense that we talk about this a little further and maybe come up with something. But it's tricky because we have groups that want to camp. Uh, we've had some canoe groups that camp overnight on the field um, and some other groups like that. A lot of that comes through Cindy downstairs. doesn't even really come to me other than she says, is there anything happening you know, with those groups? I'm assuming that those groups have insurance. Um, but do we check on it? I don't know. And should we be? You know, That becomes just a question, I think. Um, Two other things. Uh, about six years ago, I was told that there was going to be a park and rec committee uh, once the park was being developed, um, and not to worry about filling out the slots on the rec committee. Um, that never happened, and at, at this point, I'm not sure it's even being discussed. So we plan to uh, be sending you some, some names of people to fill out the rec committee um, probably within the next month. Uh, we may not fill all five slots with that. Uh, got four openings really right now, but we already have one person that's expressed interest and a couple others that I think will. Um, we want to make sure it's a kind of rounded out with some of the, the older parents and some people that are thinking about adult stuff as well as the youth stuff, which is our primary focus because of the time that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that brings me to my last real question and thought. Um, as the park was being developed, there was a lot of um, kind of oversight by um, some of the people that were involved in that. And I guess at this point, the oversight for the park is the select board. 
Yeah, pathways. That would be the committee that recently. Pathways, right? The, 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 no, that's yep. not the. The select board is select responsible board is, for the bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that would be yes. Part, <laughs> part of my concern is that we, um, first of all, my understanding was there was going to be a phase four. There was going to be some planning for phase four. Um, we already have pickleball courts that are going in. Um, and some people wanted a small playground for people at the library and people would do sports. Basketball courts was another thing. Tennis court was another thing yeah. uh, that people want. Um, but I came down to line the soccer fields last fall twice and two picnic tables were out in the middle of the field. <laughs> and there was a frontier soccer game in two hours. So I, and I couldn't move them myself. So I had to get people to move them. And I, I think it would be good if we designated the picnic areas and possibly even landscape timbers and wood chips and, and anchor them. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not moved all around. Uh, I did talk with Bob Mahern, who's the president mowing contractor, and he said with the zero mowers, it's not a big deal. You know, they'll mow around them. But right now they just push them and mow, and then they push them again and mow. So they get moved around by that, as yeah. well as people deciding, oh, we want a picnic over there, so they drag the tables over there, or for whatever reason, out in the middle of the soccer field. So that's just one issue, one thing. Um, and I was walking last fall, and there were some trees, limbs, and things down over the path, and um, it's like, like, who's looking out for this? And should there be a committee? Or should it be the selectmen? I, I don't know what the answer is, but um, because it's because the rec fields are what's in the midst of all of this, um, it, it affects us. Mm -hmm. You know, picnic tables in the middle of the field two hours before a game is a problem. Um, so, so is there a rec committee right now? Is there a committee active now, or is it is it quiet? No, it's quiet. No, we okay. have, I'm, we're down. I'm down to one. Person. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Megan is still on the committee. Are there people who are interested? Yeah, you I think do have some people interested okay. that we will be sending to you. My thoughts are it'd be good to have the committee that was oh, yeah. looking out for us. I wasn't even aware that it was defunct currently. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if you can repopulate it, that'd be great. For sure. Well, I, we could have repopulated it all along, but it was sort of like I was told we're going to have a park and rec commission, and um, rec will be a part of that, and so don't worry about filling the position. So we have it. Okay. Did so you know Jeff if we will fill them, but then, you know, again, if there's going to be park responsibilities, then that's another whole discussion, too. Yeah. Jeff, do you know if there's, I, I haven't heard anything about a park and rec commission for quite a while, so I would assume that that's just not something we haven't that talked about. Jeff. Yeah, so I think, I think what happened is in order to apply for a park grant, you're supposed to have a parks and rec committee uh, overseeing the park and we said oh we'll work on that in the meantime it's the select board mm -hmm. uh, right. and this is before I got here so, yeah. and, and then I don't think it ever got set up um, so if that is something that the select board wants to consider I think we should at least you know uh, reconstitute the the rec committee while we think about how what a parks and rec committee would mm -hmm. look like but um, now, if we were to reconstitute the committee as it stands right now with let's say five people, and then down the line we decide to do a parks and rec committee that say is ten people. Can we roll the rec committee into that? Or we just change and change the duties of the committee. Yeah. 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 So I would, I would think you could. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, I think it makes sense to re to we should have some committee while we're waiting for another committee <laughs> if that's the case. Um, it doesn't make sense to not have any committee, especially with this much stuff on the table. Um, and as you said, the the um, baseball program likely coming. Or rec and things like that down the line. I mean, yeah. we had a, Jeff and, and Mark Dorsho and I had a conversation about a year ago now, and I thought Mark was ready to give, give it up then, but uh, he still has a, a son for another year that will be in baseball, and um, and I I don't know what will happen um, when when Theo ages out. Mm -hmm. So I you know I just. I think it's coming at some point in time. I just don't know if it'll be in a year or two years or three years. Well, somebody could step up, right? I mean, someone could. Yeah. Yeah. Someone could step up. Yeah. Yeah. We but you know, when I when I was coming through uh, with my son, um, you know, we, we'd have meetings, monthly meetings, all year long. We'd yeah. have 20, 25 people there. We'd yeah. have field days. We'd have 50 people down here working yeah. on the, the fields. Numbers, numbers. And now they're lucky if they get a half a dozen people on a 
field day to come down and work on the field. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and, and we don't have the teams that we used to have. And a part of that's the school census. We don't have this, we don't have any teams as like we used to have. The school census was 360 or so when my son was the first class to go through from kindergarten to, to uh, sixth grade. And two or three years ago, it was down to 180, and I think it's around 220 now. Um, and there are many, many more activities for kids to be involved in than just the usual rec sports. And so they're being pulled in a bunch of different directions. So that's another factor. But yeah. the reality is we've got almost half you know, we used to have. students at the school that we had, you know, 22 years ago. Well, I think it's sort of a, a fundamental philosophical question for the town, the people of the town, the parents of the town particularly is, would you rather donate your, your time to these things or would you rather pay some money through your taxes to have them be supported? Because one way or the other, they need to, there needs to be either funds or man hours to do the work on the fields and whatnot. And so if there isn't going to be the interest from parents to step up and do those things, um, then I don't think it's unreasonable to go to the town this coming year and say we need to raise the record budget to be able to offset that. And, and to the users. Well, there, is, users no, there is no rec budget, yeah. to be clear. The okay. only rec budget is my salary. We have a revolving account. Okay. We do have the field maintenance uh, account. That's, yeah. a, that is a separate line item. Yeah. Um, and essentially, I guess that's the rec budget. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing under my umbrella, and then I'm, I'm done. I'm yeah. taking more of your time than we should, but no. is Memorial Day Parade and, and so mm -hmm. That uh, comes under my job description. Um, and so we do that every year. Which is a lot of fun, and we do appreciate that too. Yeah. Um, so I guess the question is, do we want to expand the rec department budget from just your salary and field maintenance to include some of these items? Um, is there appetite in the town to pass that? And can we make it work money-wise? Um, now, if you, so this 11 to 13,000 number here, does that include the $6,000 for field maintenance that you get currently? Okay, so you would need basically double what you have from that end right Ideally, now. Ideally, <laughs> in order to maintain the fields, once the soccer field gets yes. receded, ideally, that would be good. Um, just as an example, the, the softball field, the merit field, uh, was extremely wet when it first went in. And if it rained, even a moderate rain, um, we couldn't play on it for four or five days. There was a lake out behind shortstop and second base. So we've been adding uh, about 80 bags of turfus material every year, uh, every other year, excuse me. Um, which mixes with the infield mix and makes the field more absorbent. And we didn't, well, we did have to cancel one game, but that's because it poured, um, it poured overnight into the next morning and the game was at 10 o'clock and there was no way to get the field ready. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we didn't have to cancel any games at that field. We were able to get it ready. Um, so by doing that ongoing maintenance, we've made the field more usable. Um, and made it a, a better field. Um, this field doesn't need it as much. This, this, these fields are uh, extremely uh, porous. They're drain, they drain really well, I guess is a better way of putting it. Um, rarely, rarely have we ever canceled a game in my 22 years, soccer or baseball, on these fields, unless it's thundering and lightning and raining at the time of the game. Yeah. Um, these fields drain very well. Um, the fields over at the elementary school do not. Yep. So. Okay, so, so just to make sure I have the takeaways correct. Um, if possible, some money to offset some of these costs to, to, to bring what you're getting per year and what it's going to cost per year closer together. Um, reconstituting the, the committee so that you have a, an active committee and also potentially talking about the, the parks and rec committee as a as future thing. Um, and then a conversation with um, sort of with the town and with ourselves about whether or not we want to um, make an, a revolving thing. Oh, and then also um, solidifying what our town policy is in terms of use and insurance and then enforcing that not just through you, but if other 
Heather or whoever else in, in or Cindy or whatever is, is giving that permission, making sure that that's part of the town policy is that we collect that insurance. Um, and well, and, and I think a fee. I mean, mm -hmm. the reality is it costs money to maintain our facilities. And we're not, I mean, with that figure, we're not even talking about the buildings and the sheds and the dugouts yeah. and yeah. the irrigation system. And, and we're not talking about any of those costs. Can we find out what, so. what Frontier is paying? To use the wind field, that's all public information, right? Yeah, I think I think it. I think I asked, and it was like five thousand dollars a year or something I mean, like that. That's really that would, would go a long way to help us out. And right now, Sunderland is paying for Sunderland students at Frontier to use Waitley. So there's, I don't see any reason why <laughs> Waitley shouldn't be paying for Waitley students to use our fields. It, it, it wouldn't it would make sense to me that that if other towns are charging Frontier for that, um, and all the well, all member towns are paying into it, you know. At the end of the day, well, it's it, fair. It, it's a frontier question. It's not other town question. Okay, that's fair. No, I mean, yeah. somebody suggested this before that you know the other towns should be paying to come and use our fields. Well, no, we don't pay to go use their right, fields. Right, right. You know, so it's it really is a frontier question. Yeah. Um, they do give us some assistance and some help. Um, the the paint is. Um, the paint is about eighty dollars a case, twelve cans, and I go through ten cases in the fall for the two fields because I line the big field over there for their practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they give me another four cases um, of the orange paint for the smaller field. So you know uh, that's close to a thousand dollars in paint that they give us. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I do it. Yeah, they do the field in Waitley. Oh, they do it. Oh, they do it over there. Okay. Okay, so I guess we need to have a conversation then with Frontier about, I, I, hey, you know, we well, could Well, I mean, I think, you know, it would be a good conversation to yeah. have. Um, can, we, can we set up something with, with uh, Darius and um, Jim and uh, ourselves to talk about that? Uh, so I do have a question. Oh, sorry. Yes, Crystal, please. Yeah, is there any income actually generated by the baseball league? You know, through their user fees, things like that. Do they actually come up with a amount of money that goes into an account somewhere? Oh yeah, they, they have their own account and they, they run the basketball tournament at the end of the basketball season and, and that's a fundraising for them. But they pay for everything over there. They they pay for everything. No, I realize there. that. I just you know when we're looking at what it costs to maintain the field if they actually have, and we take that over, that does become some, not a huge amount, but it does become some income towards those costs. Is that correct? Um, probably only if we were then to run the basketball tournament, <laughs> which is a lot of work. Yeah, I've been involved in that before, and it's, it's an undertaking. So it, I mean, it, it's I think sort of the money that they, I think the money crystal that they use yeah. for maintaining the fields and, and doing the things comes from the basketball tournament revenue. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much they made this year. They they, they make three or four thousand dollars from that. Um, we used to make a lot more uh, back in the day, but we had a lot more kids and families. I mean, when I was yeah. president of the baseball league, we made $12,000 from the basketball tournament and we made another 5,000 from a baseball tournament that we had for the farm league level players, uh, nine and 10 year olds, um, that we did every year. But again, we had 25 people come into meetings. They have three. So, yeah. you know, but yes, there there could be some there could be some income generated. They they currently they were paying for the 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 outfield to be um, treated the treatments for the grassy areas, which was about which was about a thousand dollars a year. So if um, um, if baseball continued and continued to raise money and we kind of took over, we're going to take care of the uh, treatments because we're now doing the soccer field too, we're going to coordinate them, they would probably have money to give us toward that uh, eleven or 13000 Yes. But yeah. it, it, wouldn't okay. be, it wouldn't be a huge amount, but it, yes, I, I think no, you're right. I, 
Yeah, I understand it probably wouldn't be a huge amount. I just don't want to lose sight of if we take it over and they still continue with the baseball program, well, something has to happen with that money, right? True, true. But we would also have to we would also have to make a decision that we have the uh, the people power to do a tournament and raise that kind of yeah. money and, and do those kinds of things. But yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I can talk to Darius and see. But, yeah, if you can just just ask Darius about All right, that. Hold on. Yep. What the. <laughs> Sorry, Crystal. I'll restart this in a second. Gotta love when that happens. People just have so much time on their hands. <laughs> Hasn't happened in my church services yet. Yeah. Oh. I've been waiting. Happened to a Pioneer Valley planning meeting you want to. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jim. Um, we will definitely be in touch about all the items. Um, I well, do think that there's. Again, I think you know this is discussion. We need to let things percolate a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have some time before we have to start talking budget. I think Jeff and I have talked about trying to bump up the field maintenance, maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars this last year, but in the end we decided not to do that. Um, but if that might be a, an approach until this field is receded. We're not going to be paying for treatments, so that. Thirty-two hundred dollars is not going to be needed yeah. yet, but mm -hmm. at some point in time it may be. And yeah. then it's just a question of, and I think it's with a lot of things in town. How do, I mean, kayak? You ask. Where's the money to maintain that? Yep. Brand new doesn't need any maintenance right now, but ten years from now. Yeah. And I'm a big proponent of being honest as a town about what things cost and not not making volunteers make up the difference between what actual things cost and what are obviously we're balancing that with the fiscal responsibility of the town because you know we don't well, have so much money but we have increased our fees but we've also tried not to increase them too much because we have uh, a number of families that have multiple kids mm -hmm. and um you know we're in line with the other towns we talk all the time about what are you charging what are we charging and, you know but anyway well thank you for your time Always a pleasure. If there's anything else, let me know. Thanks, Jeff. Thank Thanks, you. Alrighty. Uh, next up would be uh, wiring inspection fees. I don't believe the wiring inspector is here yet, so we will push that off um, and see if he shows up later on. Um, so we will move to Village Center Committee appointments. Um, currently, it looks like there are two appointments that are pending. One would be for Rock Warner as a business representative, and the other one for Bennett Phelps as a at-large representative. Yeah, Rock is currently um an at-large representative so he'd be moving to a business okay. seat and then oh, and then his seat is the one that benefit would then be taking over is that correct yeah okay yes yep. all right um then you just need a simple vote on that from yes okay move to appoint rock warner and Bennett phelps as representatives on the village center committee all right crystal do we have a second <laughs> I think you muted the. She's muted. No. It's I. I, I um, oh, because I turned this off. That's what it is. Yeah, I think that's where our sound comes from. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, we couldn't hear you for a second there, Crystal. Hold up two fingers. <laughs> I see thumbs second. up though. I'm gonna take that's a second. All right. Let's <laughs> try. There it is. All right. We have a, a motion made and seconded to uh, appoint Rock Warner and Bennett Phelps to the business and at large respective um, representatives. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Crystal Drake, Three nothing. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Um, last on the new business is going to be the finance update. Jeff, take it away. Yeah. So, um, two things I wanted to mention. The first is. Um, we had, a, had an initial meeting with our auditors and our new accountants and they said, hey, let the accountants asked the auditors to come in a little early, uh, help wrap things up earlier than last year. Um, and we talked a little bit about the fiscal year 22 audit and basically the auditors said, 
we can do it. We'll charge you for it, but you already closed the books on fiscal year 23, so all we're going to do is tell you the, the things that you did wrong. We're not going to be able to help you with anything, right? So they didn't really see a point to it. They thought it would be better to do it. They said if we needed a single audit because we got spent over a million dollars in federal funds, which we didn't do, um, or, or uh, credit agencies would want to see, it might affect our bond rating if we don't have an audit one year. Typically, we do it every year, um, but because we got so far behind, they're recommending that, that we skip the 22 audit. I mean, unless we have somebody recommending it that we do it for any particular reason, I, I feel like, hey, that's money we don't need to spend when we've already spent extra money on the, the software and all the other things. I wouldn't hate to have that kind of offset some of that extra money a little bit. And uh, as long as we feel like the 23 audit and moving forward from there is good, then I'm fine yeah. with that. This, is there a real risk to the bond rating or is it that just a small thing? No, I, I think it's, it's pretty small. Okay. Chris Pistol, do you have any opinion on that? No, I'm good with with that. All right. Do you want us to take a vote on not doing it, or do you just want us to just? No, know? I think that's. I okay. think I just want to. All right. It. Um, and then the the second thing is, oh, so two years ago, remember how we had that issue where the capital stabilization budget wasn't put in the tax rate recap? They did it again. So we think. So we're investigating um, how that's possible when the people who identified the issue and worked on it for eight months um, were the people who filed. But we're hoping that maybe it was included somewhere else that they said, hey, we don't want to screw this up by forgetting it again, so we put it over here. Um, the challenge is I haven't been able to get in touch with anybody that worked on it last year because they all left their employers. So um, I'm working on that. I'm hopeful that we will find it, but it is possible that we will have to do the same thing again. Um, so basically what would happen is we would get the hit to free cash this year, and then we'd have to fill it back, and we, you know, fiscal year 25, we'd be back uh, on solid ground again if we need to. Okay. So what's, I just the dollar to, figure? what's the dollar figure? Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I think it was 122,000? I think 124. I think was the last one I saw was 124. 124 well, for, for fiscal 23, yeah. So, yeah, it would be 122 and a half or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so keep us updated on that. And if you find it, great. And if not, well, let's make sure it doesn't happen a third time because yes. <laughs> that would not be fun. Uh, any other updates on that? No. All right. Uh, that's it for new business. Um, now for old business, um, gas and diesel bids. Yes. Uh, I'm At the last meeting, uh, the select board voted. I misspoke on the uh, highway superintendent's recommendation. I said that he recommended the variable rate, um, and he recommended the fixed rate. It was the same company that offered the low bid um, for both variable and fixed, uh, Burke. And so I'm just apologizing and asking for a revote on the fixed. So you should revote for the fixed rate as recommended by George. Yeah. Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to um, amend our previous vote to um, accept the fixed rate as recommended by the highway superintendent. So moved. All right. So do we have a second? Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 First one, Greg Strongboy. Aye. Three nothing. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is select board updates. A um, couple of things. Uh, the first one is we were reached out to by uh, Natalie Blay, our state representative. Um, the hit just uh, the. Healy administration is asking for towns in the Commonwealth to um, look inside themselves and see if there's any um, suitable locations with which we could house um, some refugees. There's currently a lot of refugees in Massachusetts, a huge influx of them coming from uh, the southern border, and um, the, state, the state needs places to put them. They don't really like just shoving them all in a big auditorium somewhere or something like that, and they're looking to um, sort of have the whole Commonwealth, you know, take, take their part in, in that. Um, on that note, she reached out to us about um, whether or not there's any places in Sunderland that we feel meet the bill. 
um, and Sunderland's interest and willingness to work with the state um, on that end. Uh, is there anything you wanted to add to that, Jeff? You got the yeah. I I think that I just wanted to to set the context for the select board, so you're not. Which is that I think that th there's an emotional component to it, um, and there's also a fiscal component that I I think we need can't be ignored. Um, you know, with, there's certain costs, and I'm doing my best to look at at what those are. But you know, one example is if uh, family moves mid-year, so let's say they started out in Springfield or Holyoke, um, they get placed up here after they enrolled in Holyoke, we're responsible for busing them down there for the rest of the year. Um, so, you know, that can be a not insignificant cost uh, as we're learning from our Smith Volk <laughs> student. Um, so, there's that. Um, as you mentioned, not all of them are native English speakers, so there are costs associated with English learning, learning language, additional teachers and things like that. Um, I think that that's the, the biggest impact would be if there are families mm -hmm. um, on, on our schools, but uh, you know, I think that there are, other than that, I don't know what, what concerns there might be in the community. Um, but I think that, that that was at least my biggest concern is, you know, how can we help these people? Um, and, can, and then second, can we afford to help these people? So I, mean, I think philosophically, I think you're right. There's, there's two, two, two sides to this. There's the, are we, you know, do we feel like we're doing the right thing? Are we helping out a problem? Are we helping out, are we doing our share? Are we putting our money where our mouth is, that kind of thing? Um, and philosophically, I feel like it's the right thing to do. I think, you know, we are a, a liberal part of the state, of you know, a liberal state in the country, in the liberal part of the world, and that it's, it's our duty to step up when people need help. Um, I completely agree on the financial end of things. I think, for me, one of the big questions I would have back to that to Representative Blay would be, um, great, love the idea, what's the states proposing? What is the Healy administration proposing? Are they proposing that we're going to come in and donate and have money for renovating a building? Are they proposing that we're going to have a per head count uh, stipend that the town gets to offset these additional costs. This is something I would want to know before we move forward with anything. So it, I, I asked that question and I got an answer. Oh. I'm ready from her. So uh, de elementary and secondary education would give a, I think it's about a thousand dollars per student, and then about a hundred dollars per day per student. Okay. So like a thousand, if you need to buy a computer or something, you know, if everybody else has them. Um, so I will say that the price we got quoted for busing um, was 150 to 175 a day. So does it always happen that they have to go to the school? If it's mid-year, do they have to finish in the school, or could they transfer? They have to. I think I think if it's in, if they feel like it's in the best interest of the it's child to stay, to yeah, then then now, if somebody takes take some people some people in there's no stop on that right I mean if somebody wants to open their home to I there's mean, nothing yeah, certainly. There. I mean yeah. right now if I wanted to I could invite someone right. anywhere in the world to come stay with me so and, and if they stay long enough they can get their kids in so this would be more if they found some housing in town that was suitable but there's no public there's so no public building that we have that one, one of the one of the things that had come up in, in, in the conversation with with uh, representative Blay was yeah. um, the old um, care facility on Nursing Old Embers Road. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's been closed for a number of years. Yeah. It's bought by a, pre, uh, a, uh, a private, private owner yeah. a number of years ago. Yeah. Um, that was one of the thoughts was, is that something that, that could be Useful. renovated sure. and turned into, yeah. I mean, that would be potentially a bunch of units. Um, I mean, it, it's a, that location in general is, is something that the town, I think, should be having conversations about anyways, just mm -hmm. because we don't have a lot of locations in town that are have the potential to have low income housing and or elder housing and whatnot. And so that's another location that I think we should be talking about. Sure. Um, but I guess that would be my question back to Representative Blay and to the Healy administration in general is, um, you know, if, if we identify a building, is there going to be grants and funds that you guys can provide to do the renovations? Or is the town going to have to try to buy the property back from the property owner and renovate it and do all the stuff in order to provide housing for the, pe the people coming in? Um, are, is there going to be state funds to pay the rent that those people would be paying in said housing? Is that money that we would then get 
offset? Um, is the state willing to, to make an offer and buy the, that property from the private person and sort of operate it entirely within town but under their own budget and purview? Um, if it's just, hey, we want you to take some people in and we're, we're going to give you $100 per kid or $1,000 per kid, you know, that, that starts getting a little, a little hard to justify budget-wise. Um, but yeah, if you could get back to... So I just want to clarify because when I... My impression was that it would be short-term housing. Immediate stuff. Not, yeah. So like, hey, we have uh, an emergency, you know, maybe for a year we'd be using this place and mm -hmm. then they would move out and the, whoever the private property owner for whatever location could renovate it themselves or however. So I, are you, are you, was your conversation about like more long term? My conversation was most likely the same conversation that <laughs> you've had with her. Um, I'm just trying to figure out the specifics. I guess, I guess yeah. what I'm saying is I'm trying to figure out what exactly they are. I, I don't know. Is okay. that what they're saying? Yeah. Is what they're saying is that we want you to identify a building that can be renovated and then can act as a ad hoc location for temporary housing? Or are we talking about, no, we have 20,000 people in, this, in the state that we want to try to resettle in, in, in communities and have them be permanent residents of and we're willing to support by paying the rent for this many years or we're willing to support by dumping this much money up front to renovate the property. I mean, I just need to know that before we can move forward with anything. Yep. Um, so yeah, if we can get more of a concrete idea from them what they're proposing, um, that would be great. And I, I mean, I, again, I, I feel philosophically that this is the right thing to do. Um, we are a very affluent town in a very affluent part of the country, and you know it is behoove us to, to do good work when we can. So I, I would like to see that be a thing, um, but I agree that I don't want to do it at the expense of the fiscal solvency of the, of the town. So, Crystal, do you have anything you wanted to, to discuss on that one? Nope. I'm, I'll wait to see what the outcome of this is before I have too many thoughts on it. Sounds good. You know, on, yeah, because it's all going to depend on, again, the bigger plan here and what is available to us and obviously the financial impact on the town. Um, again, I agree. It's great to do, you know, something like that, but we have to weigh what it's going to cost our taxpayers. Yep, that is our responsibility is to make sure we do right by the taxpayers. Um, Dan, any thoughts on that? Or just just one thought. Uh, Sanderson Place. I mean, if they had two empty rooms and there's something short term that could be worked out for a pregnant migrant or uh, or you know somebody who was in desperate need, that would just be a thought. But I doubt uh, that's the case because I, mean, I think they're pretty full. And not just them, but also we do have what five, six apartment complexes in town between Cliffside mm -hmm. and Lantern Court and yeah. and yeah. The, the Meadows now is or social. The social, yeah, the social. Um, we have the Sugar Loaf Estates. We have the couple that are up on 47. We got the the um, apartment complex and the condos up on 47. So it may, it may be something that is worth having a conversation with some of the well, property the owners in town. Is hey, do are you chronically have a couple apartments that you aren't able to fill? We could, you know, short, potentially short set you up with a relationship with the state where you you get a guaranteed two years of of that apartment being filled for this kind of a deal. So maybe that's something we also could yeah. could bring up with Natalie. Um, and also the... We're doing a lot of conferences. Okay. All right. Um, unless anyone says anything on that particular subject, I did have one other thing, uh, and that was that we did get an email from the um, the people who do the, the wastewater monitoring uh, in town indicating that our levels are elevated. Um, and while there is some question as to whether or not there's a lot of correlation between our numbers being high and spikes in town. I do think it's important for people in town to be aware that the numbers are looking like they're high. Um, and so if you are immunocompromised, if you live with people who are immunocompromised, if you have elderly people, people who have heart conditions and like that, um, be aware, do what's safe for you, do what you feel comfortable doing uh, because, you know. The COVID numbers. To the COVID place hard numbers, yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you for yep. clarifying, yeah. Uh, we monitor those numbers um, have been for quite a while, and uh, yeah, we just get we received word that they're looking looking up. So uh, that's it for me. Anything from you, Dan? I'm okay this week. Great, Crystal. Do you have any uh, select board updates? No, I'm good. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, last on our list would be town administrator updates, Jeff. Yep. Um, just three things. 
The first is that um, I think I mentioned that the variance was approved uh, for the restrooms, the gender neutral um, single use restrooms. We got the letter today. I sent it off to the um, plumbing inspector. So hopefully he is scheduling a, a final inspection and we will be able to open those restrooms ASAP. Um, Fortunately, it looks like it's not going to be soon enough for the South County Senior Center uh, Information Fair and Cruise, which is this Wednesday from 4 to 7, um, back behind. I always get so confused as to where I am. Behind this building. Um, and I believe it's also the same day as soccer registration. So, rec soccer. Um, want to let people know about that and then the last thing is um, I sat down with our um, mowing contractor and as Jim mentioned <laughs> in the rainy season he's been doing a lot of mows we're about to run out um, and he recommended an additional four mowings um, behind this building and four mowings at the school um, for a total of about $1,977.32. Um, but I, you know, I know from personal experience, I've had to mow my lawn a lot. Um, I asked the highway super who was, uh, you know, does a bunch of that stuff on the side too. He said, yeah, it's been a, a very wet, um, rainy season and he fully understands why. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, uh, I, Jim's not here anymore, but I, th I think that the fields have been in really good shape um, all summer, so I, I think that we'd want to keep them that way going into fall. All right, are you looking for ARPA money to... Yes, to thank you. And yeah. what was the dollar amount again? Um, the proposal was for four mows, $1,977.32. So if you said up to $2,000, that would be a, a reasonable, a reasonable yeah, thing? Okay. Do, um, do we have a discussion on that before oh. we go, Crystal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have, a couple, I have a couple questions. So, Jeff, was there any discussion about Riverside Cemetery? Um, is additional mowing going to be needed there? Is that something we're going to find out after we do this? That oh yeah, by the way. So. Riverside Cemetery. The trustees pay for those mowings and cleanups. So okay. I would imagine that they they probably need the same number of mows. Um, but it would be up to the trustees to decide. Okay. I think up to, unless Cindy's going to correct me now. <laughs> Hi, sorry. Um, the town budget does pay <clears throat> for the mowings and the two the spring and fall cleanups at the Riverside Cemetery. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, so, so no, that's all right. <laughs> so, Crystal, are, are you suggesting that maybe we want to? budget a little bit more ARPA money to give some leeway on that, like maybe say three up to $3,000, and then if we come, we hear that we need to do a couple more moments there also, we can afford that, or do you, would you rather us come in with another ARPA request if that is necessary down the line? No, I just, you know, so I guess it was just more, you know, I didn't know if this was obviously discussed and said, you know, these are the ones, and it was specifically said, we don't need any additional at the cemetery so that we don't have to think about that. But if we are going to need additional, you know, I, I don't know what the right answer is here. I was just curious if the cemetery had specifically been deemed out of scope of that extra money or if it was just something that maybe got overlooked or... You know, it sounds like the, the nineteen hundred and whatever is just for these ones. So they, yeah, and it was it was not discussed. Okay. Um, so you, I mean, either either you can do this, and I can talk to him. You know, you're scheduled to meet next week, um, and you yeah. can change it next week, or um, you can wait till next week because we do have no. one or two mows left. Um, so. Mr. Hearn, who does these mowings, does he also do the cemetery, or does yes. he? Okay, yep. so maybe that's yeah. a question we could ask him is, yep. hey, what's the deal with that one? Can we bundle all together? Um, I would be comfortable app uh, appropriating the, the 2,000 today, and then if we need to do another 1,000 or something like that next week, we can always do that. Um, but if it sounds like we have a couple mows left, we could also just wait, whatever the rest of the board wants to do. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'll just 
you know, maybe we should, the, you said the, the budget six grand a year, maybe we bump it up <laughs> to make it eight going forward and, and then just. Uh, the field maintenance, which yeah. is different than the mowing budget. Oh, we have awesome. a different budget for the yeah. mowing, yeah. Okay. Lots of lots of buckets of money. Um, okay, so I, I would I would entertain a um, a motion to uh, appropriate up to two thousand dollars from ARPA for additional mowing for uh, the fields mentioned. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, Crystal Jack Chapman. Aye. aye. Uh, that is three nothing. Thank you. All right. Any other updates? No. All right. That was all the updates. Um, unless anyone has anything else at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn for the day. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All righty. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Crystal Drake, turn by. Aye. Three nothing. And it is 736. Thank you very much.